So I'm here to talk about Gatsby, which is cool. And uh, yeah, let's jump in. So my name is Kyle Matthews, and I'm the founder of the Open Source Project. And yeah, you can follow me or follow Gatsby on Twitter if you do that sort of thing. So what is Gatsby? Uh, we call ourselves a blazing fast static site generator for React, or perhaps more simple, we're React, you know, React for websites, or websites for React. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so Gatsby's grown up a lot. It's about three, it's a bit over three years old, and uh, got a lot of stars, got a lot of downloads, a lot of contributors, which is all very surreal, having gone from me sitting on my couch one day, it's like, oh, that'd be a cool idea, to uh, <laughs> something a lot of people care about. Uh, so some cool sites use it, uh, the React Docs, the React official site actually use it, they switched over last fall. Uh, so my background is actually in a, uh, I guess you'd say, I don't know, former Drupal, it's a little bit harsh. It's like, it's like a, a emeritus Drupaler, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> um, not quite retired, but I don't know what you're saying. Anyway, so I did Drupal for a while, uh, went to some Drupal cons, uh, all that jazz. Uh, and then I did, got into the JavaScript world with Backbone.js, 2011-ish, uh, and I worked at Pantheon for a couple years, two and a half years, whatever. And uh, used their dashboard. Like, I did the original version of that, anyways. Um, and now, from, since 2014, to the immediate future, I've uh, been using React.js for do a lot of stuff. And so, yeah, I started, I, I, so I actually left Pantheon around two, early 2014. So I, I had kind of my eye on React around that time. And then after I left, I was like, huh, this uh, React thing looks really intriguing. Let me dive into it. And I spent like several weeks working on it. And it just, incredibly good. Uh, it just addressed pretty much all my concerns that, you know, all the problems that we'd seen with Backbone and I was just wildly productive and it was just so easy to think about problems with React. It's just like, you just have UI problems and then and solutions just sort of fall out, you know, which is a really good indication of good design. And didn't ever want to use anything else. So Gatsby came out basically because a year later in 2015, uh, I wanted a tool that would make it easy to use React to do websites because I was like, I needed to build a new website and I was like, oh, yeah, what am I going to use? And the thought of using anything other than React, you know, bothered me. <laughs> and so anyway, so I ended up building Gatsby. Uh, yeah, and the, and the idea for Gatsby from the beginning was React has this ability to like render out your app to a string, so an HTML string. So you can take your, you know, a React component and then say render to string, and that will spit an HTML thing. And so you can actually hook things up so that, you know, you take your whole site and you can render out every page to an HTML thing, and then hook, you know, kind of wire it all up so that when the HTML page loads, it then turns into a React app. So it has all the benefits of, you know, a, a static site, which is like extremely fast, you know, timed first byte and timed first paint and all that jazz. But you're also kind of like full on React once it loads. So it's very easy to do client side stuff. Uh, so there's no awkward like, okay, we have like the static site, but oh, we need some interactivity now. And then you have to like figure out how to like throw in a, a Webpack process or something and, and kind of like make it all work. So yeah, so it's like, yes, I just said that. Uh, so if you've heard the term universal JavaScript, uh, back in Back in the backbone days, uh, you know, a ton of people were talking about this. Like, how do we like isomorphic or universal JavaScript? You know, how do we render our JavaScript app on the server so that's you know faster to load and all that jazz? Uh, and then React came along and turned out it's actually pretty easy once it's built in. Uh, yeah, and huge benefit is there's no awkward jumping around to different styles of templates. It's just React components all the time, which assuming you like React, which I do, it's very awesome. Uh, so yeah, so re initial release 2015, uh, version V0 was pretty similar to other stack side generators if you use them. You know, had like first class support for Markdown. Uh, it was very simple, you know, have a pages folder and you add a React component, turns it into a page, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, pretty simple, pretty awesome. And I rebuilt my blog and my company website and it was cool. Uh, but then, as sometimes happens with open source, people start using it. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then they're like, 
hey, this isn't good enough. And you're like, well, it's good enough for me. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so they were like, we want more stuff. And, uh, and, and a lot of people are like asking how to use it with like WordPress or you know, Content4 or Drupal. Um, like themes and code splitting, uh, scaling to larger sites. And I was like, hmm, obviously they want something other than I do. Uh, and I gradually realized that people wanted to use Gatsby for like CMS projects, but uh, as, as like kind of this presentation layer for their CMS. They're like, we want to use React, like we love how easy Gatsby makes it to build stuff, but we need to like hook it up to a CMS, you know, we need to have fast builds, we need to have, you know, have it to scale past, you know, a few hundred pages, which the first version of Gatsby is pretty limited to. So not just a static site generator with Markdown. Um, yeah, this got me excited actually once I realized this because kind of like brought me back to my Drupal days. I was like, oh, okay, like, you know, the more I thought about it, I was like, okay, Gatsby can actually be a really good fit uh, for kind of complex CMS projects because, you know, React's ability to kind of decompose complex UI problems into like very simple components, and you can compose them together in all sorts of different ways. It actually solves a lot of problems with like, okay, like we're building all these different screens and like we're sharing some code across it and we have all these like different design questions, you know, design stuff we're trying to enforce, et cetera, et cetera. And React is like a really awesome fit for that. So I was like, okay, sweet. Like this, this could actually be a great kind of solution for CMS type stuff. Uh, and so kind of how I was conceptualizing is that the traditional monolithic CMS, uh, name your CMS of choice, uh, has like a presentation layer and a content backend. And this course is vastly simplifying uh, the actual, what's actually going on. But anyways, it works. Uh, where a decoupled CMS is you split them. So now you have the CMS, which has now had its head chopped off, <laughs> so it's headless. Uh, and then you have this presentation layer, which could be done in all sorts of different ways. And uh, yeah. So the question was, and so and also V0 Gatsby didn't really have a way to like I mean, that's what people were asking. It's like there wasn't any easy way to do that other than like writing custom scripts, which pull down stuff and whatever. So I was like, okay, how do you make that? How do you bridge the gap between Gatsby and the headless CMS in an easy, reproducible way so that you know you spin up a new project and it's not like, hey, let's spend you know three weeks of R and D solving a whole bunch of problems. But what is a way that we could like? as a community, kind of build these integrations between different CMSs and Gatsby so that it's trivial to get started with. Uh, and so the eventual solution I came up with was uh, something I called, or I call, still called that, source plugins and GraphQL. And so these two source plugins and GraphQL, they work together uh, to kind of bridge the gap between your data source or sources and their presentation layer, you know, your wrap components. And so it lets you basically on different pages, you know, add a GraphQL query, which then pulls in data and injects it into your components. Um, yeah, we'll get into we'll some demo time later for that. Uh, anyways, and so release v1 with that support uh, last year. And uh, now to like integrate React with you know, some data source, all you have to do is find the appropriate source plugin, install it, and then presto changeo, your components are now glued to the data uh, without any custom code. Uh, so this is like a simple example of how it works. This is actually just querying a markdown file. But what's interesting about this model actually is that we treat like local data source, like, like markdown or JSON or YAML, whatever files, exactly the same as remote data. It's like all the same thing internally. But anyway, so at the top you have like a normal React component, um, and down below you have a GraphQL query, and it's getting passed in uh, a slug uh, to identify you know which Markdown file to get, and then it uh, grabs the HTML, like the transformed HTML for that page or for that Markdown file, and then like the title, and then up top it puts the title and the H1, and then it puts the HTML and the div, and there you go. Uh, and so, anyway, so fast forward a year, and there's, actually I haven't, I didn't check for this talk, but it's, it's easily, anyway, it's 100 plus uh, source plugins now have been written for, I think one of the latest ones I saw was uh, some dog API. Mm -hmm. Anyways, so you can build a site with like dog pictures, that's pretty cool. Uh, 
Uh, so yeah, and like total number of plugins, you can have plugins for other stuff too. So if you want like SAS support or less support or whatever, you know, there's a plugin for that. Uh, anyway, so um, yeah, we're up to 397 plugins as of this morning. Um, yeah, so community keeps growing. Uh, hit 124 total contributors. Uh, the last few weeks we've been at 100 plus PRs, <laughs> which is a lot. Um, Twitter, Twitter, Twitter loves Gatsby. So made this website with Gatsby JS and totally in love with it. React Stack site generators of the future. Super excited about the next version of Gatsby, the first GraphQL powered stack site generator as far as I know. Uh, really loving Gatsby JS tutorials and documentation. Seems like the perfect balance of depth and getting started quickly. Uh, my word, Gatsby JS is impressive. The sort of thing that's so well done, you want to make up reasons to use it, however preposterous. <laughs> I like that one. Uh, and then on a site, bloody hell that loads fast. Um, and then, uh, who here uses Lighthouse? Do people here use Lighthouse? Okay, some people, yeah. So it's a cool new audit tool, performance auditing tool that Google added to, to the DevTools. But what's fun is like, Gatsby with very little work is pretty much a perfect score uh, across the board. Um, yeah, so some sites uh, built with Gatsby. Uh, this is from Figma. Uh, E-commerce store. This one just launched like really, like last week or so. Um, yeah, so uh, anyway, so meanwhile, uh, Gatsby became a company. And so me, well, just basically, I don't, I don't, I don't just a segue, like, Open source is like hard. It's like it's like a lot of work, you know, to actually build stuff. And uh, you can you can get decently far in like you know fostering a good community and all that jazz. But at the end of the day, anything that's like significant needs multiple people working full time just moving the project along. Unless it's very limited in you know what the project can become. And so uh, as Gatsby started to grow, I was like kind of realizing that either I <laughs> abandon the project or I figure out a way to work on it full time, get other people working on it full time. And uh, anyway, so that led to a lot of investigation as to what kind of company could be built around Gatsby, which uh, anyway, so we raised, uh, me, me and a friend, we co-founded the company and raised money and launched it earlier this year. Uh, so, which is great because now we have a number of full time people working on it. Uh, anyways. Uh, so, um, yeah, how to get started with Gatsby, it's pretty easy. There's, uh, if you have Node installed, you just install a, a Gatsby CLI, and then you create a new site by typing Gatsby new in the name of the site, uh, and then you run Gatsby develop, which starts up a development server, and so forth. Actually, I'll go through that in a bit, so I won't get into it too much. Uh, we also have a pretty comprehensive tutorial that's aimed at people who have not use React and GraphQL, et cetera, et cetera. And a lot of people really love it and have gone through it. So if you're kind of not used React or GraphQL much, this is like a great place to start, just to familiarize with uh, the different tools that Gatsby uses. Um, cool, so uh, that took 15 minutes. Man, 15 minutes is a long time. I normally do like 15 minute talks or 30 minute talks, and so I'm like, hmm. Which I guess goes to say, if you have questions, just just ask them because I'm in no particular hurry. Cool, I have a question there. How do you think uh, Next.js and Gatsby overlaps? Uh, they overlap to some degree in that uh, Next can do a static export, uh, but they're not really focused on that. It's not very optimized, I guess. Uh, they're more focused on kind of the, you know, they're kind of like trying to be like the Express or the PHP of uh, React, if you will. So like, kind of like a simple, lightweight uh, web framework of sorts, where they don't have any plugin system, they don't have, you know, any, anyways, they, they, they don't try to do a lot more stuff like we're trying to do. And they're not really optimizing like the website thing. So you can do website stuff with it, just like you can use, you know, raw PHP to build websites if you want to. But, uh, anyways, it's more, a little more DIY, DIY, I guess, than uh, Gatsby wants to be. So. Other questions? Nada. Okay, so uh, let's 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 try building, or running some sites. First, actually, uh, oops. Well, here's a site. I built an Instagram clone. It wasn't really a need to go here, but anyways, 
Uh, let's try to go here. So if you go to the website, uh, so, so I kind of talked, you know, you do Gatsby new. Uh, so Gatsby new, it uses like what's called like the default starter. But there's also a bunch of other starters that we'll get into in a bit. So there's a bunch, there's a few officially maintained ones and a bunch of community maintained ones. Um, so let's first try out the default starter. Yeah. What did I do here? Oh. I was making some changes here, so hopefully I didn't break it. I didn't test this before. So we type Gatsby develop. It does some terminal thingies. Cool. Thanks, Linda. Cool. Oh, yeah. It's a nice atmosphere. Okay, so uh, yeah, so then it says open up local files and localhost 8000 in your browser. So you copy that. And then, voila! Welcome to your new Gatsby site. Uh, it says go to page two. Okay. <laughs> go back to home page. You can get trapped here if you're not careful. <laughs> um, so if we then. Uh, yeah, so if we just uh, look at the file, oh. um, see, well, that's annoying, can't ignore, okay, so anyways, if you look at the file structure, there's uh, this Gatsby config file, and uh, we'll get into that, but oh, that's cool, I didn't know it did that, <laughs> I, just, I just set up a new computer and apparently I added a new feature. <laughs> anyways, you double click on a file and it opens up this thing. So anyways, so this is a Gatsby config. It like lets you add plugins and like metadata and like a few settings. Uh, Gatsby tries to not have too many settings because settings are just, config is annoying. Uh, and then there's a few, uh, you can like add APIs uh, to Gatsby SSR, Gatsby node, Gatsby browser. But we don't get into that too much. So we just jump into here, you know we have React component. So this is source pages index.js and it just becomes, you know, the home page. Uh, and so this is, you know, we're running Gatsby develop. So if we want to change anything about our site, we just edit it. It's like, hey, decouple Drupal rock stars. So then we save that. And voila, you know, live updates. Uh, if we say rock stars is passe. Uh, <laughs> See that instead. Yeah. Anyways, so it's very easy to like try out different things and make changes. You know, you can like add inline uh, color pink, whatever. Cool. Anyway, so editing in React uh, with like hot reloading, what we call it, you know, setup. It's like super fast, super nice. Um, you can do stuff like. Say you wanted to add a new page, you just do page three. Let's, let's go to a new line. Okay, anyways, it's like, oh no, there's no page yet. Uh, but what you can just do is, oops, oh, just do page three.js. Anyway, so it's really easy just to like kind of quickly prototype out your site. You know, you can start from nothing and just start adding pages and kind of get a feel of like how things will work really quickly. Uh, it's designed, Gatsby is designed just to be able to like prototype and move very quickly when you're doing stuff. And then also, of course, you know, when it's actually built, React is really nice because, you know, there's a bug or something's wrong and it's very easy to isolate that problem to the exact component which is creating it because components are self-contained and you edit that and off you go. So. It's cool, is the idea. Um, cool, so this is, uh, so yeah, so this is the basics of Gatsby. You're in Gatsby develop, you add components, you do stuff, off you go. Uh, then it comes time to, uh, so yeah, it's like now you're like, 
I want to like deploy the site somewhere. So how does that work? So Gatsby has a build command. So it's a you know quote unquote static site generator. So uh, it doesn't have like a running server that you deploy somewhere that like serves the site. Instead, you you build it into a bunch of files, which then you deploy those files somewhere, and uh, they make things happen. So we run Gatsby build, um, and it says building production JavaScript and CSS bundles. So it has like a full kind of Webpack, Babel, you know, Uglify uh, kind of optimized production JavaScript setup, you know, already for you. Oh wow! <laughs> Whoa. I think red means bad. <laughs> yeah, red is really bad. Oh no. Oh, uh, actually, I think I. What did I do? I was. I think I was editing. Uh, okay, I was playing with this a few days ago, and I did. Let me. Yeah, I was. I was testing a change on here. I think I left it in a broken state. So let me uh, just install the latest packages. Anyway, so yeah, so. Uh, so you run a build process, and then it creates a folder with everything needed to run the site. You know, the HTML, the CSS, and the JavaScript. And then you deploy those to uh, any number of, uh, yeah, static site hosting. So GitHub pages is kind of a traditional one. Um, there's a, a few companies that kind of specializes, like Aerobatic, Netlify. Uh, you can use like an S3 bucket, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, sneak peek. Uh, we're actually, so the company, my, my company, we're actually launching a kind of Gatsby spe specialized. Wow, what's going on? Socket hang up. Socket hang up. Apparently, yeah, we're having Wi Fi problems. Uh, it doesn't like going to NPM. No, it doesn't, yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? Like. Take it to Docker either. Oh. Well, that stinks. Uh, well, we can also ignore this site and go on to the next one. Because <laughs> we have other sites we're going to look at. So other starters. Uh, yeah, so let's just go to starter blog. Uh, oh, I didn't. Uh... So this is another starter that has kind of like the basics of a markdown blog. So let me clone it. But if, hmm, the NPM is blocked here somehow. That is a problem. Maybe this will work. Anyways. Uh, We'll jump to another one in the meantime. Um, so, so as I mentioned earlier, Gatsby can pull data from basically anywhere, anything that has an API. And so what I was showing you before was like just using straight React components, but with no data. And that's fine for like simple sites. You can just you know write all the content like straight in your uh, in your React components, and that's cool. But you know any any site of any significant size, you eventually want to kind of split out. The, the content management into another system, which generally is called the CMS. <laughs> Anyways, uh, and then uh, and then you need some way, of course, of pulling that back into Gatsby and into your React components. Uh, okay, actually, wait. Okay, hold that thought. So we got back here. So we'll go back to the build process. So yeah, so you just type Gatsby build. Hopefully, this doesn't break again. And then does the JavaScript CSS bundling. Cool. So it took 10 seconds. Um, and now, so yeah, so like I guess it creates a directory with all the files necessary to run your site. So those are, that directory is the public directory. Uh, and yeah, there's a bunch of different files here. A uh, bunch of JavaScript and like mapping files. Uh, but yeah, and if, and if you look at if you look at, you know, the generated HTML file, uh, you know, has we actually inline CSS for speed, uh, and it has you know the actual HTML for your React component, whereas 
you know, decouple Drupal thought leaders, welcome to your Gatsby site, et cetera, et cetera. And then you can test this locally by running Gatsby serve, which loads up, not that, service workers, yay. Okay, anyways, so now here we have the site that we're working on, um, but you know, if you look at the network tab, it's you know pulling straight from HTML and it's pulling the JavaScript and so forth, um, but it all works exactly the same way uh, as it did during development. It's like a light switch. <laughs> uh, cool. Okay, so let's jump over here now. So if we look at the start of blog, so yeah, I was like I was getting to you know if you like split out the content. Uh, you, you, you know, you need some way of pulling it back in. So kind of the, the first way that oftentimes when people try to do that is like Markdown, it's a very simple way of doing that. Uh, and so the starter blog is set up to write blog posts with Markdown, which is sort of CMS of sorts. So if we look at the Gatsby config file, uh, it now has a bunch of plugins in to handle this. And so it has this thing called source file system, and then it has transform remark, which is like what actually does the markdown transformations, et cetera, et cetera. So if we run Gatsby develop here, <coughs> uh, okay. So now refresh this, we have a blog. And like click on it and I like, you know, kind of flies around, whatever. Uh, but same way that we have like hot reloading for React components, if we go here and we say, you know, new, or what is one of them? Uh, yeah, like this hello world. So we say hello NYC, then it just, you know, updates. And uh, yeah, we could like change the date so it's like the newest post, and then it would just reorder. So it kind of has like a live view on your data. So as you're editing data, that's also kind of live updating on your page. Uh, but actually, was the oldest. Cool. Um, so yeah, so let's, and if we look at like the front page, for example, the index.js, uh, we again, we see a component you know, extend React component. But if we skip down to the bottom, we see kind of this GraphQL query that we saw earlier in the slides. And this is querying two things. It's querying the site title, and then it's querying all markdown remark, which is a way of saying like, I want all markdown files basically. Uh, and yeah. And so that again, you know, it gets inserted up here and we kind of pull out the post and the site title and then we map over the post. So let's look at what, so, so Gatsby ships with a tool called GraphQL and it's kind of a GraphQL IDE for, exp oh, that was not it. Uh, okay, there we go. Yeah, and this is also if you, when you start up, it says, you know, visit GraphQL and in-browser ID to explore your data's data. Explore your site's data and schema. So, so yeah, so what's cool is that when you're building out a Gatsby site, you have this, there's basically, like if you're creating a page, there's kind of like two ways of, there, there's two basic tasks. It's like, first you have to like, what is, what is this page even gonna do? And then once you kind of figure that out, and the next is like, okay, what data do I need? Um, and then once you figure out the data you need, you then can like start, you know, actually flushing it out and uh, so forth. And so this fits very nicely into Gatsby because the first step is like, you know, the existential one is like, what is the purpose of this page? But then you can jump into GraphQL to figure out, okay, I kind of know roughly what I need. Now I'm going to start playing around with how to get the data that I need here. And so uh, GraphQL has a autocomplete um, and you can pull this up and you can say, okay, I have I can query my site pages, I can query files, I can query directories, I can query markdown, I can query images, uh, which is interesting, uh, and so forth. So if we say like all files, 
you know, then we can see, oh, okay, whoa, here's like all the different files. Uh, you know, we can query all sorts of properties on them. Uh, you know, like row path, uh, we can do internal media type. It's like there's JavaScript, there's Markdown, and then uh, JPEG and so forth. Uh, but generally don't query files. Uh, but anyways, you can query like Markdown, and then, you know, this has, uh, you know, we get the HTML. Okay, that's cool. We get like an excerpt, uh, which is actually what, yeah, this gets. Because you see here, it has an excerpt. Uh, we also, you know, get the date. So if you like, say, uh, oh yeah, this. So all the front matter fields are on this front matter object. And so if we do a date, but if you look at the date, it's in ISO 8601, which is cool for us, <laughs> but nobody actually really wants to read it. Uh, so Gatsby includes a way to format your dates in, in the query. Um, so you can just say year, year, let's do day, day, month, month, year, year, year. Then we run that and then press the change uh, the dates are formatted in whatever format you want. Um, so that's cool. So let's make a little tweak here. So we have this like front page and showing, you know, our posts and they're sorted by, you know, the, the, the newest post is first. We have a title, we have an excerpt. That's all cool, but we actually want a kind of a time to read sort of thing. Uh, as a lot of blogs have that, cause it's like, whoa, that's 10 minutes. I'm not gonna read that, you know, sort of thing. Uh, kind of pre-warn people who can't read very long things. Uh, so if we, if we look around in here, we uh, have a, oh, well, that's cool. We have a time to read. Oh, we also have a word count. That could be interesting. So time to read and word count. So we run those and paragraphs, words. Yeah. So let's add those to our front page here real quick. Um, so yeah, we want time to read and then we want yeah, let's just add the words count for some reason. Probably won't generally use this, but maybe we do, who knows. Okay, and so we can save that, and nothing changes. <laughs> uh, so we changed the data, but we didn't change our components, so nothing actually changed. So let's actually, before we get into changing the component, let's just, uh, yeah, let's just, uh, Yeah, let's just look at the data and see. Make sure we got what we want. So if we, if we do console.log, we can see everything that we did. And so we have, okay, cool. So we have the time to read on each node and we have a uh, word count. So, cool. So that means that this post also has you know, that same data. I guess we could have just logged out the post. Anyways, so now when we map over the post, uh, we have the node. Um, and so we have the date here in the small thing. So let's just, let's just add it here. No dot time to read. No minutes. Okay, let's see how that looks. Cool. So, boom, okay. And then we're say, let's just add the number of minutes. No dot word count dot words. Okay, yeah. So, you know, again, like, as you're designing out, you know, different pages, you know, you can be exploring your, 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 your schema, like, okay, what data do I have accessible? And then you can quickly make changes to the query, quickly make changes to the component. And so it's a very fast kind of iterative uh, cycle for building things. Okay, um, cool, so let's go to the final demo, uh, Drupal, so the last, the, the, the markdown blog, we use something called Gatsby source file system to pull in data from the file system, and if we look at the Drupal, example Drupal site, not surprisingly, we have something called Gatsby source Drupal. 
and it's pointed at a uh, kind of a live, so Contenta CMS, which probably many of you uh, know about. Anyway, so we're just actually pulling straight from their kind of demo, their live demo, to build this example site. Um, so if we run again, Gatsby develop, close the other one. Uh, so, yeah, so unlike the other ones, we now have this, uh, we actually fetch data from the Drupal API live as we start, and it's taking longer <laughs> than it should. Uh, anyways, we'll see how long it takes over uh, the Wi-Fi here. It's but anyways. It's pretty slow. The Wi-Fi? Yeah. Yeah, I just ran it earlier out there, and it was very quick, but not now. Is that actually so you can this down in the back? Sorry, what? Is that actually, when it's, when it's pulling the data, does it actually save it locally? Yeah, but it is weird though, because I did run this earlier, and like it, it caches the files locally, so on subsequent runs it shouldn't be downloading them again. So let's... Um, yeah, I just ran it here earlier, and it took... Well, it took 26 seconds, I guess. So it's still some time. Well, while that's doing its thing, we'll look at the live version of it. See if we can open that. Yeah. Just failing. Okay. So you I want can... a hotspot? Yeah. No, I, I actually, I'll just connect to my phone. Okay. Boom. Oh, nice. Okay, so let's try this again. Okay, cool. So this is a Gatsby site that I built using the Content to CMS uh, data. And if you haven't looked at their kind of demo site, it's just a bunch of recipes. So we have all these uh, recipes and there's kind of this like sort of nice, not very nice uh, design. And, uh, and if, you, if you kind of looked as I was scrolling down, it actually uh, had like a blur up effect uh, that you can do really easily with Gatsby. Um, and then if you look, like, click on one, you know, it kind of transitions immediately. Uh, you like, click another one, so it's like very fast to click around. Boom, ba -doom, boom, ba -doom. Click on all recipes, you know, you have all of them. Uh, so yeah. Uh, So one little thing I'll show off here is like, Gatsby tries to be like really smart about lazy loading things. Um, so if we refresh with the network tab open, uh, you can see it kind of like pulls in some initial JavaScript and then it actually starts prefetching other pages immediately, which is why when you click on something, it like loads immediately, is because it prefetches the data for that page. But it doesn't just prefetch the entire site because you could be like tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of pages and all sorts of stuff. So what it does instead is it only it only detect it only starts prefetching a page when it sees that the link is like visible on the screen. So I cleared the network tab and as we scroll down, see it starts pulling in immediately these uh, these little JSON files, which is what's used for um, uh, the data for each page. And so now, you know, like when we click on that, it's like already ready to go. And so we clear it again. Uh, yeah. And so, yeah, it's pulling those in. Um, so, another cool example of this is. Huh. 
this page broke. Anyway, so um, we also do the same thing for like images. If you use a, a component called Gatsby Image, we like lazy load images. And that one already loaded. So yeah, so this, oh, it's too tall. Okay. So as you scroll down this page, it starts pulling in images as they get close to the viewport. Uh, you know, which again, like helps your site like feel a lot faster because you know you have a, like a complex page with a lot of images. You want to lazy load the images further down the page so that you know the network isn't being congested. You know, with like downloading dozens of images or something like that. Um, so this is something that like Gatsby tries to make pretty straightforward to do. Cool. Uh, so let me jump back to my slides. But first, any questions about the demos? Yeah, question. Uh, question on. Yeah. So once it's in the browser, it's just the normal React app at that point. Is that using like React Router under the hood? Yeah. We, V1, we use React Router, and V2, which is coming out soon, we switched to company saw something called Reach Router, which is like pretty much the same thing. It's built by the same person, but it's a, a new version. It's a new router because it has like accessibility, better accessibility baked in. Uh, but yeah, Reach Router, Re React Router, basically. Other questions? I'm yeah. trying to understand how Gatsby is connected to Drupal there, and because it seems like it's still making network requests from uh -huh. React to the GraphQLs uh, uh -huh. from Drupal. So you're still doing a Gatsby build, right? but it's still going after grabbing live data from the site, so... Yeah, so... So it's not like it's rendering a completely static site from Drupal. It, it, it is actually, because... The, so going back to this slide, um, the GraphQL that we saw, it's like a build time usage. So we, 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 at build time, we kind of take a snapshot of the data at that point and then write it out to JSON files um, using GraphQL. And so it is, it is live loading data, but it's not like quote unquote live. It's like a snapshot in time. Uh, okay, yeah. Okay. And so the nice thing about that, of course, is that you know, everything, your entire site can be on the CDN. And so you don't have to worry about scaling the Drupal backend for like heavy traffic um, because it's like completely cached. Uh, the downside, of course, is that then you have to rebuild it every time content changes. But generally speaking, those are pretty quick. So if you have it automated, you know, with like a, a webhook or something from like when you click save, you know, you can have stuff live in like a minute or whatever. Uh, but yeah, the point, the, the goal of Gatsby is that. You know, if everything is completely cached, then everything is like very scalable and very fast. Yeah. I think I suspect I know the answer to this, but uh, can you mix dynamic and static approaches? For example, if I want to use Solar for the search uh, API, yeah, is that common? Yeah, it's super common. Yeah, uh, you should think of yeah, because like once again, like once once it's live in the client, it's just a React app, so you can make AJAX requests and render it however you want. You should think of like the static build part as basically an optimization. It's like, you, you should think of it, I'm building a React app, but it's incredible, it has incredibly optimized kind of, you know, initial loading the app stage, you know, where it does code splitting, it does, you know, the HTML render, et cetera, et cetera. But once it's live, it's just a React app at that point. So you can compare it, it's, it's more fruitful to compare it to something like just a normal React app that, you know, loads the JavaScript and renders something. Where Gatsby does the same thing, but it first renders, you know, a statically rendered HTML version of that, so that what appears on the screen is, you know, it, it, so so that the site loads much quicker than it would otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. To kind of piggyback on this question, what are some uh, implementations or use cases that really don't fit Gatsby that might better fit something like Next? Uh. Or maybe there aren't. Maybe. I I don't know of any. Because uh, the only thing, so yeah, uh, well, I'll, I'll take, the, I'll, I'll step back a little bit. So there could be the case where data is changing, you know, all the time. Like, you know, every 
you know, 30 seconds or something like that, or minutes, you know, and that rebuilding the site constantly uh, would be too much overhead. Uh, so that would be a case that next would be more useful. But other than that, I mean, Gatsby is always going to be faster and has a much richer ecosystem. And, you know, it, it produces React apps just like, you know, Next does. So uh, it's pretty much the same thing at that point. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, we're building actually a kind of a, a uh, Gatsby published service that will have uh, like incredibly optimized like build process. And so we'll be able to bring build times, you know, down to like seconds. So it'll basically make the build disappear, in which case uh, you pretty much always want to use it. So do you have, there's, there's several other questions, so yeah, so do, you, do you have a quick follow-up? Yeah, so if you have a, like personalized user-specific data, say on a dashboard or something sure. like that, that wouldn't necessarily be static content anyway. So right. So you're, It'd just you're talking be about rebuilding, you're talking about actually more permanent content, not user-specific. Exactly, content. yeah. If it's client-side, it's exactly, you know, it's just a React app, you know, at that point. And so Gatsby, you can have client-only routes, you can do login and all that jazz with Gatsby, just fine. Okay. Uh, there's a question over here, yeah? What about incremental uh, rebuilding? So if you have a large, say, design system, a lot of components, uh -huh. you're changing up to recompile everything. Uh -huh. um, I heard on a podcast recently that you guys are working on incremental uh, rebuilds. Yeah, exactly, yeah. That, that's what I was saying, like, the really optimized build process. We'll be uh, doing incremental builds. Um, also, we'll be able to, like, parallelize a lot of the builds uh, in kind of a cloud environment across, you know, however many workers is necessary to kind of chew through um, your site and get it built really quickly. So, and there's a question here, yeah, there. How do you manage some of the Mutual Wedges applications? How, how do I manage what, sorry? Mutual Wedges applications. WYSIWYG? Multi-language. Oh, multi-language, sorry. Yeah, several languages in your application? Yeah, a lot of people build... You have 10 languages, how do you switch from... Yeah, yeah. A lot of people build uh, multi-language websites with Gatsby. It's, it's. Uh, I mean, generally they just kind of have a prefix, you know, like en dash us or whatever, uh, to kind of distinguish between the different uh, versions of the site. Um, but oftentimes you can use the exact same components for all the languages, and so it ends up being pretty straightforward to just, also like Gatsby has a way to programmatically create pages. So basically you'd say, what are my languages? What are all the pages? And then you just spit out, you know, the URLs for each one. Um, yeah. And, uh, there, there's some starters that kind of demo how you can do stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the content you showed was structured, recipes, blogs. Um, uh -huh. If like content admins want a page builder functionality, are uh -huh. there challenges you should doing that with Gatsby? Uh, Generally not, because even like page builder type stuff, it's like individual things. It's just like the order could be changed, you know, different. And so generally, you know, your component would then, it would just take, you know, bring back the data and then say, it just kind of looped through whatever the, the content editor did and then say, okay, like this is a image gallery. And so I'm going to like render this data out to the image gallery component. And then like the next thing would be like, okay, this is a you know, a, you know, little content thing. So I'm just gonna like use the component thingy, uh, content thingy, you know, component to, to render that out and so forth. So yeah, there's a lot of people that, that use page builder type stuff with Gatsby and uh, they do patterns like that where they just say, okay, this page can have all these different types of data in like different types of little things and then have compo comp components that can render each type and then you just loop through the data and render it all out. So. Yeah. Yeah, there. Is there uh, a Drupal starter in the works, or because I noticed it's not, there's not one on there? Uh, so, the tricky thing about a Drupal starter is that Drupal doesn't have a predefined schema, which means that then the starter would have to make some assumptions about how your Drupal site is set up and so forth. Uh, so, the best we can do basically is have the, the content uh, example. Because um, that already has like you know content types and example data and all that just set up. But getting started is really straightforward. It's just basically you you have the JSON API module installed and 
you add the Gatsby source Drupal plugin and then point it at you know wherever your site is hosted. And then, and then at that point, you know, you start it up, and you have, you can look at GraphQL like we showed earlier, and then just start, you know, writing queries, and you know, off you go. Yeah. So follow up on, on that, um, the uh, Gatsby source Drupal. Uh -huh. you put in that patch that works with reference entities yet? Is that blind yet? So, sorry, what? There, there was a, a, pat, a pull request to work with reference entities in the GraphQL Gra interface. Is that has that been pushed in yet? Uh, I'm is not it, sure. It is. Yeah, I think yeah. it's in. I think it is in V2. Okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said, there's hundreds of PRs a week, so I don't, I don't see every PR these days. Uh, yeah, Alex? Assuming I got really excited about, about Gatsby after this presentation, and I'm going to go away and try to like rebuild uh -huh. the evolving website in Drupal. Uh -huh. What I want to know is, uh, you know, we've got 20 landing pages, but we also have a couple of thousand blog posts and mm -hmm. languages over, over the last 10 years. Uh -huh. How long is my build time going to be right now on my MacBook? Um... <laughs> That's hard to know for sure, but it'd be the order of minutes. Uh, I mean, yeah, it kind of depends. Like, very complex pages take longer to render, so that can increase build time. Uh, also, just uh, syncing with Drupal can add time, as we saw earlier. Uh, but yeah, like on repeat builds with everything's cached, it should be sub minute, generally speaking, or or around like a minute, minute and a half. For like cold builds, it could take. It should be definitely sub 10 minutes at the most, but off maybe like five minutes or something like that would be the range. And will I feel this during development or only when I want to push new content out to product? Yeah, just just, uh, just during the build. So when does, with development, you know, it's like I showed earlier, it's like it's just, it's all live, basically. Uh, the build process is when it like actually goes through and tries to do like a bunch of optimizations on your site. And so that takes longer. Develops pretty lightweight, yeah. <laughs> Uh, you mentioned the JSON API integration with uh, like Drupal starter thing. Uh -huh. Are you like, aware of any specific challenges with using JSON API for this? Uh, no. no. Uh, I haven't seen any issues about it. I mean, I, I, I don't build sites all the time with Gatsby and Drupal, so I, there, there might, I mean, basically my feeling is that the integration is, it's, it's being used by people. It gets like 5,000 downloads a month. Uh, but I don't think it's to the, you know, rock solid stage still. Uh, so I would think you could, I think you could like pretty confidently go into it without expecting too much trouble. But I wouldn't be surprised if you do an ambitious project with like Drupal and Gatsby that you'd run into some issues that would need to be fixed. Um, it, it's, it's kind of at that stage. It's not rock solid, but it's also not, you know, wildly broken in all sorts of obvious ways. Um, but. Yeah, if there's specific things. I mean, do you have like specific problems, potential problems in mind? I'm a maintainer of the JSON API model. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like the trigger relationships. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, it seems to work great. Like, we pull in data and we use it and it's cool. Yeah. Just because of that question, I'll just mention that uh, I'm doing topic uh, 345, specifically about using the Gap Resource Drupal plugin. And uh, some challenges there, but nothing specific to JSON API that I've been doing. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, question one. Um, you said you, you copy everything down to the server to a static uh, JSON. Yeah. What do you do about authenticated? Authenticated what? Uh, it's like a user, user data or you know, like data that only certain people should see. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean. Do the static files just live on the server? I mean, is there any sort of. Yeah, so authenticated stuff, you wouldn't. You know, kind of like the discussion earlier about, you know, what if you have like user dashboards or whatever, stuff like that. So authenticated data, you don't want to build static. Like static is just optimized for non-logged in users. It's like, how do we, how do we get pixels on the screen as fast as possible for non-logged in users? But if you have like authenticated data, you would want to, you know, have client, you know, client stuff that's querying Drupal. Uh, so you have like you have the person log in, and then you'd start you know just querying from the from the the client to get that information. You wouldn't want to do it static, like build it statically, because then anyone could access it, which would defeat the point. <laughs> uh, is there another question? Yeah, question. Any uh, uh, plans to do a Drupal GraphQL integration instead of JSON? Yeah, actually, uh, that is something that we're very keen on because uh, like a year and a half ago, there was very few native kind of third-party GraphQL data sources. And so that's kind of like the source plugin concept came to be. It's like, okay, we want to use GraphQL, 
but we have to integrate with the REST API. So how do we like, bridge that gap? So we can you know, set on the source plugin because we just download the data and then kind of automatically create a GraphQL schema from the data and so forth. Um, but now like more and more systems have native GraphQL support. And uh, we've been working on adding what's called GraphQL stitching support to Gatsby, which basically lets us pull in a remote schema and like stitch it in to our local schema. And uh, anyways, the long and short of it is that once that's ready, it's kind of a, we have an experimental release out. Uh, you could try it. <laughs> But if you're going to try it, it's like because you want to help make it better, not because you want it to necessarily work completely. Anyways, uh, so we have we have experimental support for that, and like there, there's uh, someone that's been working on that, though he unfortunately can't start work. We're actually hiring him, but he's went off to finish up some other contract work before he can like completely finish it. But anyways, he'll be coming back a little bit later this year. The long and short of it is that uh, once that's ready, you'll just be able to point at your Drupal GraphQL schema, and then start writing graphical queries. Um, which is both cool because then we don't have to do all this like extra work to make things happen. But it's also cool because um, yeah, like the whole like pulling down data uh, to make it, you know, build a site from it gets slow. You know, at some size of site. Like if you had like fifty thousand nodes, hundred thousand nodes, whatever, it, it just sort of becomes unfeasible to try to like sync all the data down locally. And so this, this, this GraphQL stitching allows us to kind of only pull down when we're actually building the site. So during development, you just like only run queries on demand basically to pull down the data that you need. But then during builds, of course, you would have to pull down the data to you know, actually build up the site. So anyways, there's a lot of advantages to doing things in that method. Uh, yeah? Uh, why did you call it Gatsby? Uh, no particular reason. It's, I just like... Yeah, it's great. That's why. I was like, there's all sorts of funny puns you can use, uh, basically. Uh, no, it's, it's basically, uh, I like reading. I like literature. And I wanted a good name that nobody had picked already. <laughs> and so I went off looking at you know literary names. And uh, Gatsby was one of the cool ones. So I was like, sweet, Gatsby. Yeah. Uh, so what, what are the typical cases that you have to do a full site rebuild? Is it just basically like site redesigns? Global navigation changes, or are these a situation where you can do a full rebuild? Yeah, yeah. So, it, it's, so you think of Gatsby as like, okay, how do we create the fastest site possible? And to create the fastest site possible is you create a perfect cache where everything is, you know, you don't have to do any sort of dynamic lookups or whatever. Because if you have to do that, then, you know, there's all sorts of potential problems from, you know, getting overloaded by traffic or having some sort of cache, what is it called? Like cache. Uh, like one one cache breaking affects another cache, whatever. Anyways, there, there's all sorts of potential problems when you have dynamic lookups that you know, which makes running the site hard. And so because of that, like Gatsby's like, no, like everything has to be kind of, you know, any change has to be. You have to rebuild the site basically. So you change content, you change code, you change anything. It has to be rebuilt so that you can have a perfect cache. It's its own CDN and it's super fast. But uh, like, like I mentioned earlier, we're working on incremental. So anyway, so yeah, obviously that again gets kind of silly because like. You fix a typo and you have to rebuild the whole site. Like that seems silly. So we're working on uh, incremental build support, which we'll be adding to our publish platform. Uh, which means that you fix a typo, and then only the pages that are affected by that change. And we'll also be able to say, well, you didn't change any code, so we don't have to rebuild your code. We don't have to rebuild your CSS. It's only rebuild the HTML for these few files or these few pages that were affected. Uh, so we'll be able to like do those sort of things like very efficiently, very quickly, even for very large sites. Yeah. Alex? When I tried uh, static site gens uh, some years ago, one of the things that pissed me off was just how slow it is to rebuild everything. Every yeah. Day. Uh, have other static site gens now solved that problem in a way that you can emulate, or is it still an unsolved problem? Uh, different ones build at different speeds. Uh, Hugo is well known for being the fastest because it's like go slash it doesn't do very much. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyways, um, but even like Hugo, like at some size, it still slows down pretty dramatically. And so the only real solution is incremental builds, which is, you know, you only actually do the work that's necessary. Uh, and uh, because of how Gatsby's built, we actually can do that, you know, fairly easily. Well, it's possible. It's not easy. It's possible. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Do you have any common or successful use cases for like a, just like an existing content site that was uh, incorporating Gatsby that didn't do like a full 
you know, uh, migration, but maybe like picked, I don't know, uh -huh. a homepage or a landing, like, can you, can you talk about something? Uh, yeah, I've, I've seen it a number of times. Uh, it's like through the homepage or something? Yeah, exactly, yeah. You, you, you can, I mean, Gatsby, it does have to like own the page. You can't just like fit in Gatsby to part of a page or whatever, but yeah, like picking out like subtrees of the site to rebuild with Gatsby is, is pretty common and quite doable. Cool. So yeah. Okay, let me actually jump through the slides. I think we're over time, probably. And uh, yeah, now you're all hungry. Uh, well, yeah.